be a prop. Welcome back. So the purpose of the today's test was to um, take the aircraft out on the runway when it was cold and see if I can figure out kind of exactly how much cooling I'm getting coming in through the intake scoop when I have it in the closed position. In other words, a position there where the air is forced to go down through those baffles and then down through the intercooler and the radiator. So that's basically um, what I'm going to do for this run. Delta Tower, Raptor 352 Tango Delta holding short of 17. Raptor 352 Tango Delta, shut off tower, runway 17, high speed taxi approved. Caution, maintenance vehicle right side of runway, past taxiway box shot. And for those of you who've noticed a bit of shimmy in the nose wheel, that's totally acceptable as long as the internal damper keeps it under control. So um, being a castering nose wheel, it's going to be... Right. Belt off the ground, uh, Raptor 3.2 Tango Delta or off at Alpha would like to take you back to 1.7. November 3.2 Tango Delta, belt off the ground, runway 1.7, taxi Alpha. Uh, runway 1.7 by Alpha 3.2 Tango Delta. Alright, so that first run seemed to be pretty good, it didn't, uh, it didn't get the temps up very much at all from cold, which is what I'm aiming for, so I'm going to just do another run now, just to get a couple more runs in before um, it gets too warm here.
Belt off to tower, Raptor 352 Tango Delta holding short at 17. Raptor 352 Tango Delta is off tower, high speed taxi runway 17 approved. Caution, maintenance vehicle departure and runway 17. Uh, runway 17, high speed taxi approved. Uh, got the maintenance vehicle in sight, 352 Tango Delta. And it's also procedures requested. Off the ground, uh, Raptor 352 Tango Delta, uh, off at Alpha, taxi back 17. November 352 Tango Delta, off the ground, on my 17, taxi Alpha. Alright, my 17 via Alpha 352 Tango Delta. Belt off the tower, Raptor 352 Tango Delta holding short at 17. Raptor 352 Tango Delta, lot off tower, runway 17, ta high speed taxi approved. Runway 17, high speed taxi to Tango Delta.
have like clearance across the back way solid. Ain't it possible to see this across the back? Be this switch, you Tango Delta, 10 left one able, for short tax for Alpha, contact ground point 7. Off the ground, uh, Raptor 342 Tango Delta, like to Alpha here, like to take you back to the north ramp. Number 352 Tango Delta, taxi to parking the Alpha. Alright, so I'm pretty comfortable now with uh, the airspeed that I've got the aircraft to on the ground and it's enough for flying uh, it in ground effect. So I uh, don't want to take it any quicker than that and as you can see here I've got all the access panels and the cowling and everything off and everything opened up so uh, my new DAR Lloyd can come by and start his inspection so we're going to get yet another inspection of the airframe which is good. The more eyes looking at it, the better as far as I'm concerned. So he may have something I need to fix. Um, but other than that, it shouldn't um, take him very long. I think he said about four or five hours to do an inspection. And if everything's good, uh, he'll sign off on that. And uh, then I'll be, uh, you know, cleared to get the airworthiness certificate back with the um, modifications for Valdosta and be able to take it into ground effect. All right, so I've been meaning to show you guys um, how the power runs looking um, on the engine output here for when the engine's cold and you know doing this first run down the runway. I wanted to see how much breathing room I've got for temperatures. So this is the first run that I did just now that you saw um, in this video. And you know, starting out here, I waited till the temperature was about 150, which is basically here. And so these are the temps here, uh, the light blue is the coolant and the dark blue is the engine temp. And then up here, this is uh, your engine speed here and your throttle. And so I basically rolled into it there to full throttle and I've got it, the fuel that I dialed back you know, a couple of weeks ago. So it's only putting 90% of the fuel in there that I had before and that's sort of keeping everything cooler. And down the bottom here, you've got your um, turbine inlet temperatures for turbo one and turbo two. And I want to try and keep those sort of under about 1650. So as you can see, ramping up here, the uh, you know first turbo there got to 1370. Um, and that was you know after I've basically pulled the power back from 100% throttle uh, down to about 50% was where I sort of of, yeah, 45%, something like that. And you can see the uh, coolant temp and the oil temp sort of creeping up here. Um, and then obviously, you know, on a first flight, this would, the power would stay pretty much uh, consistent all the way across here until, you know, one of these temperatures here got to within a range where you'd have to pull the power back. And that's, you know, what I'm looking at. But anyway, in terms of headroom, uh, down here on the uh, turbine inlet temperature we got to 1370 and you know I'm sort of um, 
kind of wanted to not exceed 1650 and if you if you look at to the point where i still had the power on there you can see kind of the curve if you extrapolate that it's going to take quite a while before it gets up to 1650 which would be around about here somewhere so that may not be a limiting factor um, with the fuel dial back the way i've got it right now we may um, you know never actually hit 1650 and in fact, the last time that I did a just a static run on the ground there, I never actually got it to go to 1650 when the power was dialed back here. So um, there's just not enough heat being generated in order to get there. So I don't think that's going to be the limiting factor for a first flight. What, what I'm more concerned about now is the engine uh, oil temp and the coolant temps. So here when I basically had the full power and still you can see, you know, just starting to uh, head up north in terms of the temperatures there. Now, the 230 degrees is kind of what's going to be my area there for saying, okay, now's the time to pull the power back um, so you don't exceed 250. And, you know, 230, if you look over here on this chart, 230 is this line here. So based upon how that was sort of going there, and there's obviously a lag in terms of um, how the heat builds up in the engine from where the throttle is. But if you sort of extrapolate to this uh, level here, you know, that could take all the way over to here before we have to pull back. And at that point, you know, the aircraft is uh, completely, completely up at altitude, um, enough, you know, for a safe return to, um, to the airport. So again, it's, it still needs to be proven, but I'm just looking. So having uh, headways or having headroom is a definitely good thing. So right here, it's uh, 169 and we're saying, you know, 230 would be the point where you absolutely have to pull the power back if there's just not enough cooling to maintain it below 230. And you see, even after I uh, ease off the power here, it continues to climb because of heat soak. And you've got um, heat coming out of the turbos as well because the turbos are water cooled and they're also running oil from the engine to lubricate them so the heat that's generated in the in the turbos is actually transferring into the cooling system and also into the oil so it's not just heat that's being generated by the engine itself um, you know by combustion so i have to be sort of aware of that and you know if, if this ends up being a problem i may have to put an extra um, like an oil cooler or something uh, on board but We'll see if we have enough. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, next up, I'm gonna do like a static run on the ground again, starting cold like this and compare these temperatures here on the coolant to see how they compare um, with a static run where there's no air moving in. And I should be able to see like a pretty dramatic difference in here and in, in uh, you know, how the coolant um, it stays lower because of the air moving through the inlet, uh, you know, when you're blasting down the runway at 80 knots. So um, I'll show that in the next video and we'll see how we go. Uh, anyway, that's, um, so far it's looking good in terms of cooling, I'm not too worried about it. I'll probably end up um, running the engine the next time with the uh, governor just at the max setting there. So I hit 3,700 RPM. Right now I had it at 3,300. It pulls just as hard. Um, and in fact, it actually stays cooler than that. Um, but you know, I just wanna try it at different RPMs again, just to see what the best um, setting is. Anyway, I thought you'd uh, be interested in taking a look at this. And as you can see, the maximum there that it hit uh, was not 193 on the coolant and one around about 190 or yeah, a little bit more 192 on the engine. So uh, yeah, that's the update for first half of this week. Thanks again for watching and uh, tune in again for the next one.